White House officials are stonewalling the impeachment inquiry as Republicans shift their defense of the president. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> We've established this repeatedly, but it's worth remembering as the impeachment inquiry intensifies. Donald Trump is very unpopular. He lost the popular vote in 2016 by a greater margin than any president in history, and more people have had a negative opinion of him than a positive one since virtually the start of his campaign. No politician has been this unpopular for this long since Gerald Ford pardoned Nixon and then fell down that flight of stairs. <laughs> Remember when we thought slipping on wet stairs was the dumbest thing a president could do? <laughs> My God, we were adorable. <laughs> now, in Trump's defense, he's not at risk of slipping on wet stairs because he keeps toilet paper on his shoe to dry <laughs> each step as he goes. So Trump has always been unpopular. By contrast, in 2018, Democrats won the House with the largest midterm margin of all time, smashing the record for the popular vote in midterm elections. In fact, that's the reason this impeachment inquiry can even happen in the first place. Democrats won an election, and now they have the power to impeach the president. It's important to remember that whenever you hear someone call this an illegal coup, or when Republicans say stuff like this. You have to accept that President Trump is president. That's the problem. They don't accept that President ah. Trump won the election. And America hates a sore loser as much as any country on the planet. This is an unfair process being driven by sore losers. They're sore losers. They won the midterms. You guys are the ones who, whenever you lose, pass a bunch of laws making it harder to vote. That's why Republicans love voter ID and gerrymandering so much. If they lose the next election, they'll probably introduce a bill mandating that all voters must have a valid driver's license in at least three different states, obtain at least six business years prior to the election, and the only DMV in the country is located in an abandoned hotel on a cliff in Yosemite, and it's open from 1 to 4 a.m. on alternate Wednesdays in months beginning with the letter Q. And, and they're going to call it the Freedom to Vote Act. Now, Trump's historic unpopularity is clear in the polling on impeachment as well. A majority of Americans now say in polls that Trump should be impeached. Now, you might expect a president in that situation to mount a defense and try to change public opinion. Trump instead chooses to believe that the polls are fake. Mr. President, according to several recent polls, more Americans want you to be impeached and removed from no, office than the number the of Americans polls. who don't. You're reading Fox the wrong polls. Wall Street You're reading. Let me just ABC, tell you. Washington Post. I have the real polls. polls. I have the real polls. <laughs> Oh, you have the real polls, and, and they show that no one wants you impeached, and, and you're keeping those polls to yourself. Well, that makes sense. Trump seems like the kind of guy who would keep good news to himself. I mean, these polls say people love me, but I don't, bragging about it just seems, I don't know, is it, like, tacky? Trump will always be a low-rent New York City con artist. He's like a guy with a table outside the Nike store going, Psst, over here, I got the real shoes. <laughs> and then he sells you a pair of Air Gordons. <laughs> So Trump, deeply unpopular in national polls, and most Americans say he should be impeached. The only thing he has going for him is that we still have a dumb, antiquated electoral college system that lets, like, six states decide the winner. And Trump's unpopularity is clear whenever he steps outside the bubble of his rallies or Fox News, like last weekend when he got booed at the World Series. Now, you might be thinking, if the president can't even go to a baseball game without getting booed, where can he go? And apparently his advisors were wondering the same thing because somebody thought, surely, he can go to something like, say, a UFC fight without getting booed, right? Loud boos and some cheers for the president. This is how he was received at a UFC event last night at Madison Square Garden in New York. Is that one of those real polls he was talking about? <laughs> Even more embarrassing for Trump, the winner in one of the UFC fights that night posted a photo of himself afterward with the caption, Bernie Sanders, you bastards. <laughs> I mean, the only way... The only way this could have been more embarrassing... The only way it could have been more embarrassing for Trump is if Bernie himself won the fight. Put up your dukes! In the octagon, I'm the one percent! <laughs> the fact is, there's nowhere Trump won't get booed, save for his rallies. So, the day before he got booed at that UFC fight, Trump decided to bask in the adoration of his crowds at a rally in Mississippi. Now, these rallies are such fawning affairs that Trump routinely makes up words and no one seems to bat an eye, which is exactly what happened not once, but twice at his rally on Friday. First, they engineered the Russia hoax. That was a total hoax. The single greatest lies ever foistered upon the American people. It's 
all a phony deal, this whole impeachment scam, to try to undermine the 2020 election and to delegitimize <laughs> one of the greatest elections. Ah, uh, yes, foistered and delegitimized. <laughs> Usually, if you hear a loved one talking like that, the next question you ask them is, do you smell burnt toast? <laughs> My favorite part of Trump's made-up words is how he ramps up to them for effect with a long pause and then gets them wrong. <laughs> it's like watching one of those dudes run up to a pool and do a cannonball before realizing it's frozen. <laughs> ah! Foistered again! <laughs> Putting aside, the fake words, Trump's argument fundamentally boils down to accusing the Democrats, who won a record margin in the midterms, of trying to undo an election, an argument he repeated later at the rally without any made-up words. And then they figured they could take us out a different way, very dishonestly, right? With the lying and the spying and the leaking. And we are kicking their ass. Yeah, but you're not. You see, they just passed a resolution on the impeachment inquiry, and they've spent weeks gathering damning testimony from direct witnesses. How are you kicking their ass? Trump's like, a football player who does an end zone dance whenever the other team scores a touchdown. <laughs> Patriots up 41 0, and it looks like the Jets running back is diving into the crowd. <laughs> He's having fun. Also, what's going on here? With the lying and the spying and the leaking. Is he working on his Arnold Schwarzenegger impression? <laughs> With the lying and the spying and the leaking, impeaching, including and investigating of the crimes, things of that nature. The leaking and the creaking and the peeping <laughs> and the peaking. <laughs> so now Democrats are moving forward with the next phase of their impeachment inquiry. Uh, today they began releasing transcripts of their depositions with key witnesses, and in response, Trump has started suggesting that those transcripts might somehow be fake. Last night, Trump attacked House Intelligence Chairman Adam Schiff, tweeting the Schiff will change the words that were said to suit the Dems' purposes. Republicans should give their own transcripts of the interviews to contrast with Schiff's manipulated propaganda. He is a proven liar, leaker, and freak. <laughs> I'm calling him a freak. You look like a dollar store action figure called Mafia Goodfellow. <laughs> Trump keeps putting Republicans in a bind because he keeps insisting that his infamous phone call with the president of Ukraine was not just unimpeachable, but perfect. For example, yesterday, Trump spoke to reporters and insisted yet again that his phone call was perfect, although this time, he put a little extra flourish on it. The whistleblower gave a very inaccurate report about my phone call. My phone call was perfecto. <laughs> oh, it was perfecto. <laughs> Sounds like a tourist trying to fit in during a trip to Rome. Uh, the phone call was a perfecto. <laughs> and that was a reward of some biscotti. So Trump thinks his phone call with the president of Ukraine was perfect. Now, you'll recall that in that conversation, Trump tried to coerce the president of Ukraine to investigate Democrats like Joe Biden by telling him, I would like you to do us a favor. And when he heard that, the president of Ukraine was flustered, or as Trump would put it, foistered. So, <laughs> as Democrats start releasing transcripts of their depositions, the White House is obviously desperate to do anything they can to stop the process. Today, for example, four White House officials refused to show up for their scheduled hearings. The witness list for today appears to have gone from four people to zero. CNN has learned all four White House officials who were scheduled to testify today will not be showing up. In fact, most of the witnesses scheduled to testify this week plan to stonewall. They're just refusing to show up now. How long before Trump tries that tactic? The day he gets impeached, he'll probably be holed up in his bedroom hiding under a pillow for it. You can't impeach me if you can't find me. <laughs> and this is an invisible door. Trump and Republicans keep changing their defense because they don't have one. Democrats have now passed a formal impeachment resolution, and they're releasing transcripts of damning witness testimony. Trump's freaking out as the impeachment inquiry moves faster and faster, and... Foistered. This has been a closer look.